All right, now we're ready to inject the connector, the ST connector here, with uh, the epoxy and feed the fiber up into the connector. Okay. As we mentioned before, keep the dust cap on the connector until we're ready to use. Take that off and put that over here. And I have my crimp tool. I have a protective sleeve for when we're all done to protect the fiber while it's curing. I have my epoxy. Everything is ready to go. Notice that I have the epoxy standing up. That's to keep the uh, adhesive all in a uniform fashion. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I had this protective cover so that I don't poke myself with it. We'll take that and get rid of that now. Take the syringe, cover it with a Kim wipe, and blow the air bubble from within. There it goes. The reason we cover it with a Kim wipe is because any little bits of adhesive will spit out of the, the needle that's sitting inside there. Okay. Now, place the needle inside the connector as far up inside as it will go. Okay. A light squeeze on the plunger until you see a small blue bead come out of the face of the connector. Remove the needle halfway out of the body. Proceed to continue filling until you see adhesive come out of the back of the connector. That's called back filling the connector. Draw back on the plunger. That's to remove any excess adhesive that's left in the needle so it doesn't spew out all over the place. Place that to the side. Now watch what we do here. As I'm feeding the fiber in through the back of the connector, I'm rotating the connector back and forth. What that's going to do is that's going to allow the fiber to find the hole inside the ferrule. Do you see that? And as that's doing that, it will feed all the way through. Notice some of the adhesive comes out of the back of the connector and helps to cover over the Kevlar and the jacket. Okay. I bring my crimp sleeve up. And notice that the jacket meets the back of the connector. They're together here. I bring the crimp sleeve up over. Notice the Kevlar is covering, covering the body of the connector. As I bring the crimp sleeve up. Okay. Now the next stage is to grab the crimp tool. And I'm going to use the number 151 hex, the second hex. And I'm going to use that on the large body of the crimp sleeve. Bring the connector flush with the crimp sleeve. Crimp it all the way. Make sure you do crimp the body and use the full length, the full extension of the crimp tool all the way as far as it will go to get a full crimp. Now on the second crimp or the step down part on the jacket, I'm going to use the number 128 hex, the smaller of the two. This is a ratchet tool, and you have to fully extend it, otherwise you have to open it back up again. And again, a full crimp going all the way, fully extend it out so it can close again. Leave that to the side. With that fully crimped, I bring up my boot. The boot slides up and over the back body. Carefully goes up all the way. You notice I'm balancing my hands on the table. Okay. And there you have it. The assembly is completed. Ready to sit overnight and cure in a minimum of 18 hours. So depending on what time you're doing this, uh, the epoxy will be cured enough and ready to be polished. Okay. For overnight curing and to protect the fiber while we're waiting for it to cure uh, and for safety's sake, 
we're going to take this protective sleeve. We're going to place that sleeve. Notice how I carefully place the fiber through it. There is a key and a keyway to the sleeve. Notice here there's this little keyway right here. The key to the connector fits inside that keyway. So again, I slowly feed that up inside. I find the keyway, fit the connector up. Now, notice the little ear of this sleeve. That fits on the coupling nut. Notice I bring the coupling nut, and I bring it around, and I lock it onto that ear. The coupling nut is locked. The fiber is now protected for the night. You can put this aside, go make another one. You can terminate the other side tomorrow. You don't want to go and terminate this, this side tonight because the epoxy is still loose on the inside there. So what you want to do is you want to let this side sit and cure tonight. Take your cable. You have excess extra cable inside the kit. Cut and do one more end. Again, if you cut back this end right here and start terminating here, the loose buffer that's still inside there until the epoxy cure is holding it all together may pull forward. So you want to leave this end alone. And if you want to make another one, use the extra cable that came with the kit. Tomorrow, you can, you can terminate the other end of the cable.